Welcome to March, and to begin the spring season, we are going to be speculating on what DLC is coming next to Planet Zoo. The wait between the winter and spring DLC every year feels like an entire lifetime. It takes a toll on all of us, believe me. But we are potentially only three weeks away from hearing some news about our next DLC. So that raises the question, what is our next Planet Zoo DLC? We are in year four now of Planet Zoo DLC, moving on to DLC 13. And let me tell you, predicting these DLCs gets harder and harder, but I do have a few ideas I want to share with y'all today. Getting into my first prediction for the DLC this spring, we have the Islands Animal Pack. This is the one I feel the best about for the sole fact of what our number one animal on the meta is. This animal has been at number one on the meta for quite some time now too, and I think it's finally about time we see the Tasmanian Devil. Tasmanian Devils come from the island state of Australia known as Tasmania a perfect candidate to headline our potential islands animal pack. The Tasmanian Devil has been an animal the community has seemed to have wanted all the way back since the Australia pack days. It's always been an animal I have heavily requested myself to. This animal is also the main reason I believe we are about to get an islands animal pack. It just seems to be the best fitting pack for our little devil friend, and like I stated earlier, it just seems to be the right time to be getting this new animal. Coming in next, we have another animal that has been highly requested for some time, and that is the Fusa. I've said it before and I'll say it again. We have three lemurs in game and yet no lemurs bane. The primary predator to the lemurs, the Fusa over the years has turned into a quite iconic animal. And if you grew up in the 2000s, this animal was also made very popular by the hit animated film Madagascar. Madagascar is the second largest island country after Indonesia, so I think it's safe to say an island's animal pack wouldn't be complete without an animal from Madagascar, and I think the community, judging by the meta wishlist of course, would agree the Fusa is the most deserving animal from Madagascar for this pack. We also desperately need more arboreal species, so the Fusa would also be a very welcomed addition on that note as well. Next, our third animal of the pack. Think y'all know what it is? The North Island Brown Kiwi. If you're a returning subscriber to the channel, you probably know I have really no interest in the Kiwi. I've just never understood the appeal. But to be honest, what I do realize is just how much the community wants this animal. An island's animal pack would just not be complete without the addition of the kiwi. Definitely one of the strangest birds on the planet, the kiwi comes from the island country of New Zealand, which is split up into the North Island and the South Island. New Zealand also consists of over 600 islands, correct me if I'm wrong, so it's safe to say an island's pack would just not be complete without a species to represent New Zealand. North Island brown kiwis are some of the most unique animals on the planet. I mean, just look at this image of how big their eggs are compared to their body. Crazy, right? Well, all in all, we definitely need the New Zealand representation and the kiwi is definitely that animal. Coming down into our fourth animal, we have the Goodfellows tree kangaroo. You could say also the Matchies tree kangaroo, but due to the Goodfellows being much higher on the meta and now being a top 10 animal in the 2023 meta, I think it's a fair thing to say that the Goodfellows is the most likely option here. Anyways, the Goodfellows tree kangaroo comes from the island country of Papua New Guinea which is the third largest island country in the world. And according to Google, it says the Goodfellas tree kangaroo's range also goes to the border of Indonesia. So yeah, thought that was also pretty cool. The tree kangaroo, no matter which one y'all want, is definitely an animal that needs to be added into the game. It's just such an iconic animal and a decently common animal in captivity, but what's most important is that it's an extremely popular animal and one that definitely deserves to be in the game. One challenge I do see with this animal, however, is the tree kangaroo's complex movement and just how much of their lives they spend in the trees. Its behavior will most likely be similar to the koala in games, so take that as you will. 
Either way, I have no doubt Frontier will knock the model and animations out of the park if they decide to add in this animal to the game. Next is our fifth animal, and today we have one for our ungulate lovers out there, the Lowland Anoa. The Lowland Anoa is definitely a little bit more of an oddball pick, but I think the animal is definitely worthy of having it being added into the game. The Lowland Anoa comes from one of the four greater Sunda Islands, which are the four main islands of Indonesia. This island is called Sulawesi, which may sound familiar due to our Babarusa buddies in game. Coming from one of the main islands of Indonesia, I think the Anoa is a prime ungulate candidate for an island animal pack. The Lowland Anoa is only at 157 on the Metal Wish list and 132 on the 2023, hence why I, I called it an oddball pick, and I think the community could probably agree there. I think adding the Anoa would just really diversify this roster, and all in all would be a really overall great pick for any island related pack. Coming in at our number 6 spot today, we have the Largib. I know, I know, the Lar Gibbon in certain circles hasn't aged well, but in my opinion, it is a still very worthy inclusion to the game. We have the Siamang now, and I think it's just about time we get the Lar Gibbon. The game to me just wouldn't be complete without them. Like the Anoa, the Lar Gibbon comes from Indonesia, and some zoos even combined their Anoas with their Gibbons, which is pretty cool, so we could definitely see some interspecies enrichment bonuses there. As an example, Point Defiant Zoo in Washington State does this. But even though they come from Indonesia, that doesn't mean they live on the same island. Indonesia is a huge country, making up over 17,000 islands. The Lar Gibbon is primarily found on the island of Sumatra, just like our only and current Gibbon in-game, the Siamang. The Lar Gibbon, even though it's been pushed down a bit, I still think deserves to be added into the game. It's just such an iconic animal, and with the Siamang being able to brachiate, I think Frontier would just want to possibly add in at least one more brachiating animal, and what a candidate the Lar Gibbon would be. Also, they make some of the coolest noises on Earth, so yeah, the Lar Gibbon, let's get him in the game. Coming in at our seventh and last habitat animal of the island's animal pack prediction list, we have the American Flamingo. This might just be me, but I think we desperately need a Flamingo in game that is actually pink. To me, the greater Flamingo in game, and in real life of course, has always been my least favorite Flamingo for the sole fact that it just isn't very pink and colorful. So with an island's animal pack being speculated on, I think the American Flamingo would be a prime candidate to be added in. The American Flamingo is the only Flamingo to be a natural inhabitant of North America, and can be found on a multitude of islands, perhaps most notably the Bahamas. The American Flamingo, also known as the Caribbean Flamingo, is definitely one of if not the most common flamingo in captivity over here in America, and is just one of the remaining animals I consider to be an absolute necessity to be added into the game. Alright, so let's wrap up the segment with our exhibit animal. Or should I say exhibit animals. Coming in as our walkthrough exhibit animal for the island's animal pack, we have lorikeets. Just like the butterflies, I think it's likely we see multiple birds added into the game. And what better than to add lorikeets to an island animal pack? Now, there are many different kinds of lorikeets, which we could sit here and debate on, which will be added in. But for today's video's sake, we are just going to be talking about the rainbow lorikeet. So the rainbow lorikeet does come with a little bit of controversy. Because Australia is and isn't an island, depending on who you talk to, I'm not really here to debate or give my opinion on that subject matter, but rainbow lorikeets also live on the island of Tasmania, although not naturally. So when it comes to lorikeets for the sake of the pack, we are going to be calling them island animals. When it comes to popular walkthrough aviary birds and zoos, I think the number one bird that comes to mind is the lorikeet. Seriously, which zoo at this point doesn't have a lorikeet landing? Rainbow lorikeets are probably by far the most popular and dare I say most common lorikeet you can see in zoos, and with good reason. They are just some of the most beautiful looking birds to exist. Also, I just have a strong feeling that we are going to be getting our first exhibit bird next. We got bats in twilight, we got butterflies with grasslands, I mean, come on. Birds have to be next, and what a better bird to add than the iconic lorikeet as our first specimen. So to complete this segment of the video, I thought it would be cool to include three alternative animals just for fun as I think these three are possibly just as likely to be added in as well. Starting off with
with an alternative to the American Flamingo, we have the Little Blue Penguin. If we were to get a third penguin, I think the Little Blue Penguin would be our coolest and most unique candidate. These penguins are native to New Zealand and also live on the coast of mainland Australia. Little Blue Penguins also live in warmer climates, so you can keep them in outdoor habitats, generally most of the time in warmer climate areas. Unlike other penguins like the emperor and king penguin, which need climate controlled indoor spaces. Little blue penguins, like the name suggests, are just literally just little blue penguins. So yeah, it's pretty safe to say they are incredibly unique. Next, replacing the Lar Gibbon is the Cockerell's Shafak, another lemur native to Madagascar that I think would be a great addition to an island's animal pack. I know this would be our fourth lemur in game, which is why I have the Lar Gibbon over it, because that would only be our second gibbon, but I can't ignore the super unique Shafak. These super cool lemurs don't move like normal lemurs. They jump and bound from one point to another. They also look super cool, being mostly bright white with some pretty cool unique brown undertones on its arms, legs, and chest area. As cool as these animals are, a big reason I don't personally want to see them quite yet in an island's animal pack is because if we were to get an island's animal pack, we are most likely getting the Fusa, which I stated before is a native to Madagascar. I would just like to see a little bit more diversity in an island's animal pack than just a majority of the animals coming from Australia and Madagascar. But I think it has a shot of making it in, so that's why I think it makes a good alternative slot to the gibbon. And lastly, our third and final alternative today, we have the walrus. To a lot, the walrus sounds like a prime candidate for an island's animal pack. But the main reason I don't have it as a primary pick and addition to the main roster is because it's an odd one out to the primarily tropical or warmer climate theme we have going on here. To me, it just sticks out like a sore thumb. Even though it's possible, heck, even probably extremely likely, I just would rather this pack focus on these warmer climate animals. The walrus is an animal that has really grown on me though over the years, and I do eventually want it in the future as they are incredibly complex and unique animals, but I would rather have them skip over it for islands just to stick with a more warmer and tropical climate theme, but I wouldn't say no to its possible inclusion. Now, let's explore the rainforest today, shall we? As our second and final pack prediction today, I think a rainforest animal pack is just as likely as our island's animal pack. This is solely due to the fact that the majority of our meta wishlist top voted animals come from islands and rainforests. So it seems very likely that Frontier has also noticed this as well. So before we dive into the animals, remember some of the island's animal pack animals are going to bleed over into this pack prediction as well. Remember, we are trying to speculate on the most likely animals and packs we are to receive this spring, but the reality is we aren't going to get both sadly. So with that, let's predict the Rainforest Animal Pack. Starting off with our headliner animal, we have the iconic Linnaeus's Two-Toed Sloth as a habitat animal. Yes, I fall under the sloth for habitat animals camp. This is just my personal opinion, but I would rather have the sloth as a habitat animal just for the sole fact that I can fully customize its enclosure. I know seeing the sloth as an exhibit animal would mean it has more realistic behaviors, but until we see a more customizable and non-walkthrough version of the exhibit system, I will always fall under the sloth for habitat animal camp. I wouldn't be mad with the sloth in the walkthrough exhibit, just slightly disappointed. But what matters either way is the fact that we need a sloth in Planet Zoo, no matter which system it comes in. The Linnaeus' two-toed sloth is by far the most common sloth in captivity, and therefore should be the prime candidate in a zoo game. Other than that, there really isn't too much else to say about the sloth. I think everyone is familiar with sloths, which is all the more reason it belongs in the game. Coming in next is our second animal, we have the Black Howler Monkey. By far the most requested South American primate, the Howler Monkey, specifically the Black Howler Monkey, is one of the most iconic primates to exist. Mostly due to the fact that they make these crazy howling noises that can be heard from over three miles away. So Black Howler Monkeys can be found in Southern Brazil, Paraguay, Eastern Bolivia, and Northern Argentina. So yeah, safe to say they are a prime candidate for our rainforest animal pack speculation list. Another cool reason we should definitely get Black Howler 
dollar monkeys in game is because they are perfect for interspecies enrichment and also possibly future possibilities for interspecies enrichment like tamarins and agoutis. We are also in desperate need for more monkeys, especially from the New World variety. The Black Howler monkey sits currently within the top 20 of both meta wishlists, and like I said earlier, seems to be the most commonly requested monkey in the New World variety. Third, we have another South American species, the Ocelot. To me, the Ocelot is one of our last remaining felines we absolutely do need, and the meta wishlist voters would seem to agree as well as we have been seeing it trend upwards as of recently. Cats and dogs seem to do very well with the casual audiences, as Frontier does seem to add them quite a bit to their packs. And if it wasn't working, they probably wouldn't keep doing it. All the more reason to get the Ocelot. Ocelots are also very popular within the most casual zoo goers. They're basically smaller little jaguars to the common eye, and of course, that means people perceive them as adorable. Ocelots are also very unique cats that on first glance don't seem to be very built for climbing. They're even described as being very terrestrial, yet they still do quite a bit of climbing and are known to be quite good at it. The Ocelot is a unique cat that would allow players to build complex and unique habitats for it, whether they want to take the more arboreal route, as most zoos at least in the states do, or keep them on the ground in some thicker vegetation. Not to mention the fact ocelots don't just occur in rainforests, but also more arid regions coming as far north as Arizona and even in my home state, Texas. Also, we do desperately need more of those quote unquote smaller filler species and ocelots being included in a rainforest animal pack would perfectly fill that niche. Continuing that South American trend, let's move on to our fourth animal, the South American Kawadi. The Kawadi has been an animal many have been wanting for a long time. Like the Ocelot, the Kawadi would fill our niche of smaller filler animals that we desperately need in game as well, filling out that most neglected continent as of recently, South America. The Kawadi, for those who don't know, are members of the raccoon family and are primarily diurnal creatures, which is opposite of their relatives, the raccoon. They are found in tropical and subtropical areas of South America, therefore being perfect additions to our rainforest animal pack roster. The Kawadi is also an arboreal animal being able to expertly climb trees and build nests within the trees to sleep during the night. This once again fills out a niche of arboreal animals which we also are in desperate need of right now in game. What else is there to say really about Kawadis? They fill out niches that are incredibly lacking in game and they are extremely heavily requested among the community. So yeah, let's get into Kawadis. Moving away from South America now with our fifth animal, let's discuss Africa now with the beloved Red River Hog. To me, the Red River Hog is an absolute necessity for the game and it just so happens to be a necessity for many others in this community too, being at number four on the meta and number three on the 2023. Tropical Africa to me is lacking diversity in the game right now, and we definitely need to give it more representation. An animal that has really risen popularity over the past decade in zoos is the Red River Hog. Honestly, I feel like every zoo I go to now has them. I literally couldn't escape them even if I tried. So why not add them into the game, right? They really don't do too much that separates them from animals like the Warthog or Babarusa, but they just look freaking awesome. Also, you can cohabitate them with gorillas, which is just even cooler. Red River Hogs are just cool, all right? They don't climb or deep dive or anything like that, but sometimes we just need those more basic and common in captivity animals to make our zoos feel more complete, and the Red River Hog would be perfect for that. For us players that like to build as realistic zoos as possible, the Red River Hog is an absolute necessity and a needed species, especially for a rainforest animal pack. Now coming down into our sixth and seventh habitat animals, we have moved over from the island's animal pack, the Goodfellows Tree Kangaroo and Fusa. I already talked about them quite a bit before, so I'll just say this. They're both iconic rainforest animals. They're both top 10 meta wishlist animals and definitely deserve to be in the next pack, whether it be islands or rain for us. They're just too iconic to leave out of either pack, so that's why I have them included in both islands and rainforests. 
Now finally for our exhibit animal slot, I think we could definitely see potentially different macaws for our walkthrough exhibit. I think the obvious choice here for one would be the scarlet macaw, but if they choose to go the route of butterflies and add in multiple species, we could see others like the blue and yellow macaw, the hyacinth, the military, or really any others you want. Macaws are very common and popular birds, and I think they would fit very well as our potential first exhibit bird, and they would definitely be top contenders for a rainforest animal pack. With that being said, let's get into the alternatives shall we? Coming in as the alternative to our black howler monkey, we have the golden lion tamarind. Just another very popular, very common in captivity South American primate. The golden lion tamarind would be a great alternative to the howler monkey. Like I said earlier about the small animal niches, the tamarind would definitely fill that role. Also, we are just in desperate need of South American primates, so no matter which one we get, which monkey we get, I'm down really for any of them, and I think the tamarind would definitely be a really cool species to get in such a pack. Now, replacing the Kawadi, we have the Southern Tamandua. So believe it or not, the Tamandua is already in game, kind of. On the bench that came with the South America pack, you can clearly see a Southern Tamandua. So just like how the Red Crown Crane has its own scenery representation before it got added in, I think the Southern Tamandua could follow suit. It's another kind of anteater, which is already awesome, but it's also arboreal as well, which is even cooler in my opinion. I've always had kind of a weird fascination with the Southern Tamandua ever since I was a little kid. I could never see it in my hometown zoo, so when I did see it, I always saw it as the coolest thing ever. Rarity equals cool, I guess. Southern Tamanduas and anteaters in general are just really cool animals, and I think this is a very possible animal to see in a rainforest animal pack. Especially with Frontier seeming to like the idea of adding in animals into the game that already exist as scenery. Lastly, we have a bit of an oddball inclusion in a rainforest animal pack, but I just had to mention it. Being a replacement for the Fusa, we have the American Black Bear. I thought it was kind of necessary to include at least one temperate rainforest animal, and one of the most wanted in the meta is the American Black Bear. Little fun fact, I used to live in Washington State, about 20-ish minutes away from Mount Rainier National Park, which, yes, does include one of America's temperate rainforests in which American black bears do reside. I think to some, this would be a little bit of a weirder inclusion, but I think it would be rather welcomed to see a temperate rainforest animal such as the iconic American black bear make it into a rainforest animal pack, just to show there are more types of rainforest, you know, than tropical. So yeah, those are my two pack predictions for this year's spring DLC coming to Planet Zoo. What pack do y'all want to see coming later this year? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. We are creeping up here very close to a possible reveal as to what is coming next, and I am for one very excited for what the future holds. My heart is set on a warmer climate theme here, so that's why I'm holding out hope for either islands or rainforests. So with that, thanks y'all for watching, stay safe, and have a good rest of your day.